This is Evergreen Gardens, the next scenario I'm taking on in Roller Coaster Tycoon Classic, and this is how I beat it. First thing, there's 10,000 of the large 40,000 loan amount already drawn when I begin the scenario, so to cut those repayments down I will pay it back in full and extend it as I need to. It's a huge park with lots of gardens in place, but no evidence of a theme park. I'll need to build one and attract 1,000 guests by the end of year 4. One guest has already paid the £1 entry fee. I could close the park and let this guest leave, but unlike the previous scenarios which started with no rides, I'll quickly place some to get the park operating. The other thing worth noting is this is a pay on entry park, which always makes revenue generation a bit harder, so that 40000 maximum loan could come in handy. There's a network of paths covering the whole park, but we don't want guests wandering too far away from rides, toilets and shops. They'll definitely get lost complain about a confusing layout and, most importantly, not part with any of their cash. I'll cut the path off early, add some rides and then reconnect that piece of path once I'm ready to expand and create a new cutoff point slightly further from the park entrance. I'll likely do this a lot until I have rides across the entire park, which in four years I'm not sure I'll achieve. So we need some rides to get started on converting these gardens into a popular theme park. Having checked what's available, I restrict research to not include transport, water rides and scenery. To make a quick start, I'll dig out an area of the hill each side of the path from the park entrance. This will give me a flat landscape to give guests some rides as soon as they enter the park, and as if by magic, there they are, a twist and a merry-go-round, but I'll need a coaster too. To start us off, I'll turn to my trusty friend the Mango Muncher a junior coaster which can sit on that lovely flat area at the top of the hill. A path is needed to get guests up that hill and I'm ready to test the ride before opening. Some benches, a trash can and a mechanic and handyman are needed for this area and then all three rides are ready to be opened. That should attract the first influx of new guests and allow me to raise that entry fee slightly. I've gone for £5 but to be honest 10 or 15 would probably have been okay and that's probably what I should have gone for. The only other roller coaster available at this time is the wooden coaster, so I'll build a custom one sticking close to the park entrance. In fact, I'll build the station as a bridge across the main pathway. We turn into the park and climb up ready for the first drop, which heads back towards the entrance. As with any good wooden coaster, there will be plenty of drops and it will weave in and out of itself to create a fairly compact design. I'll add an underground section for good measure before bringing the tracks back over the main pathway near the entrance to complete the ride. There were no special elements used in this ride, just drops, climbs, helixes and bank curves. I did include an on-ride photo section though to make sure this ride can still generate some revenue despite not charging a ride fee. I'll get the entrance and exits path connected to the rest of the park and then we can hop on a test ride. Despite the very high intensity, the high excitement and medium nausea rating make this one a winner for me, so let's get it open, but with one addition. I mentioned no special track pieces, but I've added one now, a water splash right at the end, and placing this over the main pathway gives guests below a chance to get splashed too. I've quickly added a spiral slide on top of the hill close to Mango Muncher, and after two months of general park upkeep, it was time for another new addition, this time a go-kart track. These are always popular, but I feel like I have to always build the station as long as I can to get to the maximum 24 cars, otherwise queues can get pretty long pretty quickly. As it's not paper ride, guest turnover isn't as important to me on this scenario, but it's still important to keep the park running efficiently. Before getting too carried away, I build the entrance and exit pass just to make sure I don't forget to leave myself room for these as I build the ride. Go-kart tracks can be pretty compact and don't need to gain any height, just plenty of twists and turns. I'll do a small underground section to improve the excitement, and I'm making a reasonable length track as I will only allow one lap per ride to ensure the queue doesn't get out of hand. A cut through the hill and a ride over it completes the track and I'm ready to welcome guests to race. I have a lack of available thrill rides, so I'm going to cut my research right down to just this category and roller coasters, and speaking of coasters, we so far have just the wooden coaster in addition to the junior mango muncher. 
And now that research has brought me a corkscrew, let's get another intense coaster built. Building the station through the hill behind go-karts, I bring the lift hill up and back around 180 degrees, so when we drop we can turn over the station. I bring the track back under the lift hill and then add a corkscrew at the top of the hill, where we can cut through the land and head towards that area of flat land close to the park boundary. Although, I'll leave that hilltop for other rides and bring the corkscrew underground instead. We emerge over the station and head towards the start of the ride. A vertical loop gives this ride a second inversion before we follow the footpath back towards the station, passing over the go-kart track. I've plenty of underground sections and sections which pass near pathway scenery and other rides, so I'm confident of getting some good stats as long as I haven't hit those inversions at too high a speed. Let's find out. Brilliant, I'm happy with those stats, so let's get some guests on board. To accompany the corkscrew coaster, I have a new thrill ride available, the pirate ship, which can sit alongside the edge of the lake. And to balance the pirate ship and intense coaster, a gentle ferris wheel can go there too. As I begin my next construction, I should point out that between ride builds, as part of my ongoing park management, I've hired some extra mechanics, handymen with work areas set to approximately 8 to 10 grids each, and I've also added some food and drink stands as well as some toilets. My next new addition is this dinghy slide, which climbs over the water but will mainly be placed on land. A big first drop gets the speed up before the dinghies will fly around mainly closed tubes to avoid them flying off the track and crashing. I've used what was previously a path through some walled gardens as both a guide and an area of scenery for riders to travel through, before a small climb up and drop back down heads towards the station. Boats lose speed quickly on uphill tracks of dinghy slides, so I've been careful not to include too many inclines on the ride, and none which are particularly high. After a quick rejig of the final section of track to accommodate queue paths, it's time for a test ride. I mentioned boats losing speed very quickly on inclines and even this small one is too much so I'll replace it with a lift hill and after a retest I'm pleased to report a high excitement rating. A couple of months later and it's time for another roller coaster. I'm halfway through the scenario in terms of time but already at over 900 of the required 1000 guests so I'm not at all worried about completing the goal. There's still lots of untapped space in this park but I'm keeping things compact to make managing those paths a bit easier. I don't want guests to be wandering too far between rides. This area between the hill and garden seems ideal for a station and I'll take the lift hill towards that disused track so I can make use of some of the land closer to the edge of the park. It wouldn't be a looping coaster without a vertical loop and of course we have to bring the track back through it. Dipping to the top of the water will give the excitement a small boost and another loop over the path would be pretty cool for guests underneath if I ever get this path reopened. At that point I'm going to take a pause as I need more revenue to complete the build. You'll notice I've cut the interim period out, I've jumped from March to July. In that time I was just doing some basic park management and waiting for new guests to arrive to boost my funds. Now I have a little more available in the bank, I repaid loan to keep my interest costs to a minimum and I can extend that loan again to complete the track. I'll do so with an underground section back to the station and with entrance and exits now added we can test this one out.
Very good stats and the addition of new coasters means I can increase my park entry price. To be honest, I've been a bit conservative with the pricing in this scenario and could and probably should have been charging more for the entry fee. Earning revenue is much harder in pay on entry parks, so getting the most out of your entry fee is key. And that leads me into a little promo for a video I made on how to get the most of your revenue in pay on entry parks. For every coaster I build, I like to add one or two new static rides. I'll do that with a motion simulator on a flat hilltop and a haunted house close to the new looping coaster, meaning I've opened a new gentle ride, thrill ride and coaster in the last in-game month. I played fast through the next few months. In that time, I did hire a few new handymen, place some more park benches and just pay back some of the loan which had been maxed out by building the looping coaster. It was a ride that proved popular, so I built a bigger new queue. I don't often do this, I'd rather guess be paying to board a ride than wasting time queuing for another one, but this is a pale entry park and I'd like as many guests as possible to ride the coasters which have photo sections. I have long trains on this one so even a large queue like this shouldn't take guests too long, but I'll add in some TVs to be safe. And that was me done. I did very little in year 4 because I simply didn't need to and was keen now to move on to the next scenario. It's a bit of a shame this park doesn't have a bigger goal. Four years is slightly longer than most roller coaster tycoon scenarios, but the park has the design of one which could be developed into something really big and exciting. I've used less than a third of the total space and I've comfortably beaten the 1000 guest goal. Maybe I'll come back sometime to carry on the build and see what I can create from Evergreen Gardens. Thanks a lot for watching, please do remember to like and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more of my adventures on Roller Coaster Tycoon Classic.